welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about the posterior pituitary and its hormones now please look at the top top guys here the area which i am showing you right now with the pointer this is hypothalamus you guys already know this okay it's a hypothalamus now hypothalamus it have two nucleus two important nucleus okay so what is this supraoptic nucleus son this green color nucleus which i am pointing you this is supraoptic nucleus son now the supraoptic nucleus is producing which hormone anti diuretic hormone and see one more nucleus is there which i am showing you right now with the pointer this is paraventricular nucleus so pvn paraventricular nucleus is present where in the hypothalamus and it's helping in the production of which hormone oxytocin so anti diuretic hormone as well as the oxytocin they are produced in hypothalamus they are not produced in posterior pituitary most of the students will answer if i ask oxytocin is produced from most of the students will answer posterior pituitary no oxytocin as well as anti diuretic hormone they are produced from hypothalamus from supraoptic nucleus as well as paraventricular nucleus now these hormones are going to come down to posterior pituitary via blood no these hormones are coming down to the posterior pituitary with the help of axons see there are nerve connections are there nerves are coming down the nerve axons are coming down see these nerve axons whatever are coming down from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary is called as hypothalamo hypophysial hypophysis is nothing but pituitary so hypothalamo hypophysial tracts we all know that the axonal cell bodies are not axonal cell bodies the uh, axons the group of axons in central nervous system are called as tracts so hypothalamo hypophysial tracts are a connection between hypothalamus as well as the posterior pituitary okay at the end of the day what happened the anti diuretic hormone oxytocin from the hypothalamus they are coming to the posterior pituitary and they are they are getting stored in vesicles and those vesicles are called as herring bodies so adh and oxytocin are stored inside the vesicles within the neurons and those vesicles are called as a herring bodies guys okay now see whenever there is necessary whenever there is need of oxytocin then from the posterior pituitary oxytocin is released and whenever there is a need of anti diuretic hormone then from the posterior pituitary anti diuretic hormone is released okay so anti diuretic hormone as well as oxytocin is released from posterior pituitary stored in posterior pituitary but produced in hypothalamus okay now let's discuss about important points about the oxytocin and the anti diuretic hormone which is also called as vasopressin anti diuretic hormone adh also called as vasopressin now let's see important points about the oxytocin guys oxytocin it is helping in uterine contractions okay it's helping in uterine contractions as well as it helps in milk production or ejection ejection okay milk ejection also called as galacto kinesis okay so galactokinesis that's a milk ejection milk ejection from the breast after delivery now the same oxytocin is also a drug of choice for you have to know this oxytocin is also drug of choice for certain conditions something like whenever during delivery whenever there is too much amount of hemorrhage during vaginal delivery there is a hemorrhage more than 500 ml of blood or during cesarean section if there is hemorrhage of more than 1000 ml then that condition is termed as postpartum hemorrhage means there is too much amount of hemorrhage during delivery postpartum hemorrhage now to treat that postpartum hemorrhage if there is so much amount of bleeding happening from the uterus what we have to do we have to make this uterus contract when uterus is contracting it clamps down the bleeding blood vessels okay all those bleeding blood vessels will be sealed down with the uterine contractions so what i'm saying is if there is postpartum hemorrhage what is the drug of choice oxytocin what this oxytocin will do will cause uterine contractions will decrease the bleeding so drug of choice for postpartum hemorrhage okay in the same way oxytocin we all know it causes uterine contractions when do you need uterine contractions during delivery during labor for example there was this one female who have crossed her term the term is crossing now she is like you know uh, she is a, a pregnant of 42 weeks now still uterine contractions are not coming she is not going into labor now what you have to do as a doctor you we have to start the labor induce the labor so for induction of labor what is the drug of choice same oxytocin okay so drug of choice for induction 
okay induction of labor the drug of choice is oxytocin in the same way oxytocin is also drug of uh, choice for certain conditions like breast engorgement okay what is this breast engorgement now after delivery female have to lactate now this female like milk production is there in her breast but the milk ejection milk let out is not happening because of some blockage now what we have to do we have to take this milk out from the breast for that oxytocin is the drug of choice because we know oxytocin will cause milk ejection so in the conditions of breast engorgement where the milk is not coming out from the breast we will use that drug oxytocin okay that will cause that will treat the breast engorgement in the same way let's talk about a few important points about the vasopressin vasopressin is nothing but anti diuretic hormone now vasopressin what are the functions of vasopressin by acting on v2 receptors on the nephrons okay see these v2 receptors are present in collecting ducts co c t i n g collecting ducts See, collecting ducts are the last parts of the nephron. We know on this collecting duct there are V2 receptors. Whenever these V2 receptors are activated, what will happen? Water reabsorption. Will happen with the help of aqua porin two channels. Aqua porin two channels. Okay, so what I am trying to put into your mind is normally the last part of nephron, the collecting ducts, they are not permeable to water under normal circumstances. But whenever the person is dehydrating, when the blood osmolarity is increasing, for example, this person was get lost like you know lost in the desert. Now whenever he got lost in the desert, he is losing so much amount of sweat from his body. He is getting dehydrated. Whenever he is getting dehydrated, what happened to his blood volumes? Blood volume is going down. What happened to his blood osmolarity? His blood osmolarity is increasing. Now under these conditions, his osmoreceptors are activated, and produced anti diuretic hormone osmoreceptors in his body are activated and those osmoreceptors are stimulating the posterior pituitary to release the anti diuretic hormone now what anti diuretic hormone will do now anti diuretic hormone will come to his kidneys will come on to his nephrons will act on the collecting ducts on the v2 receptors now whenever there is anti diuretic hormone there will be more and more water reabsorption see he is already lost in the desert that's not a time to lose uh, lose the water that's not a good time to lose the water he have to conserve as much as water as possible so how he is conserving the water by making his last part of nephron collecting duct permeable to water okay so only whenever there is adh then only the collecting ducts are permeable to water by implanting aquaporin two channels okay normally aquaporin two channels are not there only whenever there is adh then only the aquaporin two channels are placed on the luminal side of the collecting duct so that water reabsorption is happened i have discussed this um, concept in detail in the renal physiology also okay so what our vasopressin is doing or the adh is doing it helps in water reabsorption by implanting aquaporin 2 channels on collecting ducts backing on v2 receptors now there are also something called as v1 receptors now if v1 receptor is activated by vasopressin what will happen now this v1 receptors especially v1 a receptors are present on the blood vessels okay they are present on the blood vessels now whenever the blood vessels are acted upon by vasopressin the name itself it is a vasopressin so vessels are going to be constricted when vessels are constricted what happen it increases the bp so vasopressin by acting on v1 a receptors which are present on the smooth muscles of blood vessels causes vaso constriction okay so this is one of the function of vasopressin now here i just want to take a minute and i just want to discuss a more detail about the vasopressin receptors actually there are three different types of vasopressin receptors what are they please see guys here there is v1 a receptor which we have already discussed where it's present there is v2 receptor and v3 or v1 b receptor let's see one by one let's have a just a quick summary v1 a receptor where it is present it is present on the blood vessel on the smooth muscles okay the smooth muscles of blood vessel so whenever if you stimulate this one v1a uh, receptor what will happen vaso constriction 
okay so this is the action now whenever v2 receptors are stimulated where exactly v2 receptors are stimulated you know v2 receptors are present in collecting ducts okay collecting ducts now uh, this v2 receptors are present on the collecting ducts whenever you stimulate this v2 receptors on collecting ducts what will happen there is water reabsorption okay water reabsorption with the help of aqua porin two channels okay now the same v2 receptors are also present on remember vascular means blood vessel vascular endothelium okay so whenever these v2 receptors which are present on the vascular endothelium are stimulated then what will happen now this vascular endothelium will release von willebrand's factor okay von willebrand's factor is released okay from the vascular endothelium and this v2 uh, receptor stimulation will also helps in release of factor number factor number 8 okay two important points now this v3 or v1b receptors are present in anterior pituitary okay anterior pituitary now whenever the v3 receptors or the v1 receptors are stimulated it helps in production of ACTH that ACTH will helps in production of cortisol so I just want you to know the three different types of uh, antidiuretic hormone receptors their location and their function okay guys I have discussed all the important points about uh, vasopressin and oxytocin and the posterior pituitary hormones hope the video is helpful thank you